Hello and welcome to the show. Now all of today's vehicles may well look like they can survive the apocalypse, but the question is, how long can they survive the reckoning? We start with the Moonhawk, a pretty good base for a, uh, a survival car. It's a tough old vehicle, is the Moonhawk. This one, as you can see, heavily armoured. It looks like we've got some, maybe not off-road suspension, certainly raised suspension compared to a normal one. Could be quite helpful when it comes to dealing with the bumps and the jump. My concern would be sometimes when the cars are raised up, it can uh, weaken the suspension if it's not sort of full-on custom off-road stuff. I have seen that with a few of the uh, the modded vehicles, so we'll very quickly find out how that's going to affair. Also, the additional weight of all the armour, uh, we we might have some protection to things like the radiator, We've got a giant bull bar at the front for example, but the weight is, well, possibly in different places might cause the car to have issues across jumps, might be heavier in general and that could cause issues with some of the big landings depending on how heavy all of the armour plating is. Up to our first jump we go with the Moonhawk, a little bit bouncy on the landing but uh, no no massive harm done through all of that. We lost a tail light, but uh, I think I can I can live. I can live with a damaged tail light. That's a fairly square landing. There we are still all okay. Things are looking relatively decent so far. Uh, engine performance wise, seems like a pretty powerful car. This one plenty of speed or well, plenty of power to spin up the wheels, have plenty of speed to uh, get across the jumps so far. So if something does get a little bit broken, I'm hoping we will have the speed to uh, compensate for it. To an extent, it's certainly not the most powerful car that uh, that we have driven and being rear wheel drive. Losing the back end in places is uh, always a potential, potential hazard, potential problem, if you will. Now up towards this, uh, oh, that's a little bit too slow there. I thought we were going to go too quick and uh, just left on the throttle a smidge too much. We got away with it though. Of all of the possible ways to have got across that jump too slow, that landing was pretty good. We've done it, it was slightly dinged the rear left wheel. Like the actual wheel itself is not quite, not quite circular anymore, but uh, Again, it's not a major, a major issue. We haven't ruptured the fuel tank in all of that, which is good. So no, no big old fireball, uh, no burst tires. Uh, up across the pit we go for the first time. Big crash down on the landing. Still, everything is okay. The suspension, I think, holding up. There's definitely, I mean, we can see the fuel tank starting to clip through the, uh, through the boot of the car. That would suggest to me that we have started buckling the chassis and so on. Yeah, but if it's starting to appear there, Things like suspension and the chassis have started to be damaged. It's always going to be the case around this course. Uh, I think, yeah, rear suspension, yeah, rear, certainly rear right suspension's gone. The rear left looks a little bit healthier. So we are going to have start having minor handling issues, of course. They're only going to get worse, but we're not pulling drastically anyway. Actually, uh, we might be pulling ever so slightly to the left, but it's, no, again, nothing nothing terrible. I am perfectly, uh, perfectly okay to uh, live with it all through this uh, turn one we go without yeah, without too much too much problem it's certainly not the worst in terms of being an oversteery bugger i can use a fair amount of the power in this uh, in this car up across the bridge a little bit of air time there yeah rear rear right suspension is gone but it does seem to be the only side only sort of uh, shock absorber spring that has collapsed so we can again yeah, we can manage all of that across this car killing jump many a vehicle has fallen victim on lap but number two to that uh, <laughs> to that jump not going to be the case for our moonhawk here use all of the speed for our next jump we're gonna have a little bit of a clonky landing i think the front suspension might be starting to give away yeah, it seems to be the right-hand side of the car that's taking more of a battering than the uh, than the left so far. But the radiator's in one piece. The radiator is in one piece after all of this. We haven't had... I mean, we've had a couple of heavy landings, but uh, I'm thinking the uh, bull bars at the front, while they're still attached, certainly doing the job. I mean, the Moonhawk, as I said at the start, is a generally pretty strong car here. So... I would hope it to survive a decent amount of time, but yeah, maybe maybe those are working wonders. Now, can we get across here another time? Oh no, that's that's too quick this time around. Oh, oh. <laughs> um, well, the bull bars are gone, and the front right wheel just <laughs> was such a clean break as well. I, I'm surprised. I'm very surprised, actually. Normally, when you land on your side like that, wheels don't just ping off quite so uh, quickly. I mean, we are still drivable. 
in many ways, I'd rather it do that than snap off and be flailing around and causing the issues. I can deal with not having the wheel. We do still seem to have enough steering. Uh, can I get the speed? Oh, that's not an angle that you want. That is not an angle you want at all across that jump. And there goes the radiator. The, the bull bars are gone, and then the next jump uh, radiator is dead. Admittedly, I don't know why I know. Oh, that grabbed the window, but never mind. We're down. Uh, no idea why that just tipped the car nose forward. Um, now, losing the wheel, while most of the time it isn't a particular problem, here, this is where we could have issues. We've got to be very, very careful not to get anything sort of dragging on the floor court, uh, especially the corner of the chassis that is now on the ground. Don't want to get that caught on a rock. Easy way to do a lot of damage to your vehicle. I mean, the yeah, steering is now not great, as you would expect, having lost a wheel. But it's a lot more manageable than a car with a wheel that's flailing around as we are going to uh, head down Pothole Alley for the second time. Uh, don't do anything stupid. It looks like we might make it on to a third lap. As far as overheating goes, a relatively powerful engine like this I would expect to overheat fairly quickly. Don't, you don't really know. Oh, God. Now, okay, yeah, we... <laughs> We don't quite deal with the bumps so well, funnily enough, when missing a wheel because, well, there's no compliance at all in that corner of the car and it'll just launch you up and bounce you around. Uh, I've got to kind of hope that we're lined up well for these jumps, otherwise that's when we're going to have issues. We can't really afford to land on the front left corner of our car anymore because that's... We lose that wheel, we break that wheel, we're really, really done for. And I'm struggling to actually accelerate away. Having said all of that, we made it across. Something went crunch. Uh, I think that's more suspension, more suspension damage to the rear right of the car. Looking very low in comparison to the rear left. Are we fast enough to make here? Oh, barely. We're barely quick enough yet. Yeah, that's... Uh, <laughs> The rear left-hand side of the car is by far away. It's even still got the tail light, and the quarter paddle is still as bad as straight as it was to begin with. So that's really not taken any any batterings at all. A little bit of handbrake use required to get it turned into these tighter corners. But again, not the worst. Not the worst stereo car. Can we go further than the all-wheel drive pursue? It did lead this series in the early days, lap three at this uh, well, this big jump that is coming up. This is where we might have issues. I can get away with being a little bit misaligned at any of the previous jumps, but up here, well, if you get it a little bit wrong, you can go for a big old roll, and uh, that's what caused us the issues previous. Here we go. Flat out. Ah, perfect. Perfect positioning neatly done across the uh, landing zone. Still, even with one quarter of the car dragging along the ground, we've still got the power to accelerate away to get us up to a high enough speed to clear that jump. We are starting to gradually overheat. Uh, it is a relatively gradual overheating, though, which is nice to see. Now, up towards the pit we go. Oh, we might just clear that. Indeed, we did. We got tipped nose down again, but it wasn't the worst. Uh, the worst possible position that we did get tip nose down so we've got away with all of that through the rocky river we go we've just about made it i think the front got stuck on something still still it claws its way around the uh, track it might only have at three wheels but it is certainly not going to be giving up a fourth lap i say it's overheating i think the um water might have cooled it down slightly either that or i might be imagining things it could be. It could be either. How far can this three-wheeled vehicle go? Are we going to we're going to bounce it across Pothole Alley? I'm trying to get it out of Pothole Alley. But our steering isn't uh, the greatest anymore. That's taking a fair old whack on the old front. Oh, get around that corner. There we go. That old front right corner. However, with there with there being no wheel there, it's not doing too much damage. It's whether it sends whether it catches on the chassis and sort of the shock goes through it and takes out a drive shaft or uh, something like that, whether it gets caught and it twists the car up into the air. Silly things like that uh, could cause potential issues. Temperatures, yeah, it's going back up again. So we will overheat, but we are on to a fourth lap. This is a very, very good showing, especially, as I said, for a car with uh, three wheels, although we are now struggling with power a bit. Come on, make it across this jump. Oh, <laughs> it's only just doing it. But the critical bit is it is it is clearing those jumps. It's only just 
I fear we might have issues. Might be able to still get across here. Yeah, we're up to 46 miles an hour, which is pretty good uh, for the Moonhawk. I fear on our, our next jump. That is where we might have problems with this car, especially if we are starting to lose power. We end up overheating at the wrong moment. We may well see this uh, see this vehicle in a spot of bother, but we will we will keep going. We will keep fighting on, and I'll do whatever I can. Ooh, piston ring piston rings have damaged before the uh, coolant is overheated. That's definitely not a good sign. That's the start of the, uh, well, the end for the vehicle. Even if we manage to have enough speeds to make it across the jump, we are not long for this world, but we haven't really got much speed. Oh, that's a big crunch. There goes the drive shaft. That's it done. <laughs> I thought when we started losing power there, we might be in trouble. Interestingly, the front left is still working. That wheel does still uh, do its job. It's still a wheel. It still turns. The drive shaft would pay the ultimate price. Still, though, making it that far. Making it that far, fourth lap. Not many cars have uh, have done that. Drove very, very well for being on, on three wheels for so long. I think the rear, the rear, uh, the rear left did start collapsing towards the end of that. Perhaps not so surprising. That survived. That corner survived for a very long, very long time. Yeah, Moonhawk, a tough, <laughs> a tough car, and it is uh, it certainly lived up to uh, expectations. Up next, we have got the 200 Knights again. Another heavily armored, <laughs> heavily armored vehicle. I am hopeful with that giant metal grill at the front, we might be able to keep radiator, might be able to keep intercooler alive, potentially, on the car. Uh, Suspension-wise, we are not as raised as the Moonhawk, perhaps a little bit less bouncy, perhaps a little bit stronger in terms of the uh, suspension. We'll kind of have to see how, uh, how things go. Of course, yeah, the downside of not having as compliant suspension is you might break it on the, uh, on the bumps in different ways to some of the, ra the raised up cars. We'll have to wait and see how it, uh, how it fares. Again, feels a decent amount of speed in this one. Uh, judging by the engine, I think it's got a V8 in it. So that's, I mean, there should be plenty of power available. Once more, how the weight is going to affect the car, not really, not really sure. From what we've seen in the past, oh, well, apparently the uh, bar at the front did not help the radiator. The, the bar at the front did not help the radiator in any way, shape or form. Bugger. Um, and it's a fairly early death for a radiator. As far as the wheels go in the 200BX, traditionally we have seen wheels bend, but we tend not to actually see them ping off in the same manner. That's a very, very big flight, and there's that, that, that's kind of case in point right there. The wheels tend to camber, but they don't tend to uh, spiral. I'm sure they can. <laughs> I have no doubt, and now I've mentioned that, of course, we will lose one. But, uh, yeah, they do tend to stay attached to the car and just have an awful amount of positive camber or and get silly toe angles and all that kind of a thing. So we might be able to at least keep four wheels working, or two wheels working for steering, four wheels on the, on the vehicle, although at funky angles it's not always helpful. I mean, we're still driving at this stage. It, it's been a pretty brutal... After the uh, Moonhawk didn't have too many issues on its opening lap, it's been a pretty brutal time for the 200 Knights. Are we going to be able to clear this jump? Nope, I don't think we're quite as fast in this. And clonky, clonky, rolly, tumbly, landy, maybe. Hey, there we go. The, <laughs> the car is certainly shedding bits of bodywork. I mean, the spare tyre is long, long gone, and most of the... Uh, that of external metal piping is gone, the windows are flapping, one of them is anyway, the spoiler's gone, the boot's probably not long for this world, and with all the wheel and suspension damage, the car is an extra specially tumble-mobile. Are we going to have to have a manual, or are you going to figure yourself out? Nope. Uh, ooh, what are you I'm not even touching the control at the moment, and it's just spazzing out on the floor. Um, okay, sure, thanks car. Uh, have we got any steering left to make it around this way? I think we, we do still have steering. Um, we are just struggling. Okay, so the front front right is, well, pointing to the left, essentially. We do still have steering. We do still have enough steering to, uh, well, maybe, maybe have make corners, but making jumps is going to be uh, increasingly difficult. Oh, now there's a lot of fire going on at the front of the car. It's not what you want to see from the front of your car, <laughs> is that amount of fire. Still, and that's a really heavy, heavy, heavy landing. 
that's a heavier landing there on the front of the car than we did that lost the wheel on the moon hall. It goes to show how tough the wheel axles are on the 200 BX. Now we have had peculiar fires from uh, various vehicles. The Pigeon, the rear engine Pigeon had a very odd, we're gonna fall over again, aren't we? This is just a roll car. Um, yeah, we have had peculiar fires from cars in the, uh, in the past. Uh, this looks like a much more normal, uh, essentially, engine fire going on. Um, at the moment, it's not a problem. At the moment, it's a small fire. When it engulfs the rest of the car, which it will, if the car survives that long, and that's a very, very big if, but so, yeah, if the car survives that long, uh, when that engulfs the car and starts taking out tyres, that's when we are in uh, in real bother. Pothole Alley's probably not going to be a huge amount of fun here, because I can't really steer the car away. Maybe the potholes will manage to bend one of the wheels uh, back out, or maybe they'll just make it considerably worse. I think the answer is considerably worse here, unless we can... No, that's got no steering anymore. <laughs> there is no steering in that, uh, in that car or whatsoever. It is a, uh, it is, a, it is gone for. I mean, I, I get it in reverse. You can see there, there is clearly no steering left in this vehicle. It, it just one wheel pulls one way, one wheel pulls the other. Uh, <laughs> can't make it off lap one. As kind of expected, the uh, the BX wheels haven't pinged off, but they have been completely and utterly bent and buckled in the most uncomfortable of ways, to the point where it stops stops working. I'm not sure all the extra weight on this car was uh, particularly helpful. The radiator went almost immediately. The, uh, the bar at the front not helping with uh, surviving that. Big fire for the car as well. Yeah. I'm, I would still have the Moonhawk in terms of my Apocalypse car. And finally, we have got the uh, the Cobbert. This version called the Turtle is, well, bonkers, and it has a cannon on the top. Yeah, that cannon works as well. Now, we're going to save the cannon. We are, we are going to uh, <laughs> save the cannon. It might come in handy at some point to try and help us out with a manoeuvre. I don't know what manoeuvre. In fact, I'll give you a quick demonstration. If we press T, you can see the amount that it shunts the car. It's a pretty bloody powerful cannon. It does shunt the car around, so maybe it can help us get stuck, uh, unstuck. It might help us get stuck as well. It, it might help us get unstuck in a situation where just a little bit of a shunt is uh, required. Now, the downside, of course, of lugging a giant cannon around is it makes the car rather top-heavy and rather top-heavy on one side. Uh, I've got to be mindful of the car tumbling over. I could remove the cannon, but you see, when you give me an option of having a cobbert with a cannon on the top, I'm always, always going to take the option with a cannon, quite frankly. It's, it's just... <laughs> What other choice is there? Uh, the cannon may also affect uh, some of the landings of the jumps, because there's a lot of weight at a very awkward angle, and I kind of fear for my rear left wheels. If we can survive across a couple of jumps, that would be quite nice. Look at the, <laughs> the rear left is not happy. Um, rear left suspension, please, please don't give up. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, I've... Put it into a... Oh, God. Put it into neutral. There goes the radiator. No, the mohawk's gone. The mohawk's gone. The cannon started to slip down as the entire roof is collapsing. Uh, just keep on going, Cobbett. Um, it was slightly my bad because it felt like it was in the... Just instinct kicked in when it felt like it was in the wrong gear. And, uh, yeah, we, we might have lost some momentum coming across that. Um, oh, I'm not I'm not sure the rear uh, axles are long for this world. I don't know how much punishment that can take before it's going to snap off entirely. Because that's some unnatural angles going on for a lot of this already, but never mind. Uh, I, I much prefer turning left. I can deal with turning left. That's okay. The Comet's all right with turning left. It's the turning right that's the issue here. Uh, come on, speed across the... Oh, dear. Oh, dear. There was a big burst of flames as we hit that landing. We've lost a lot of bits and pieces from our car. Do we... Oh, dear. Do we still have... No. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. That is a destroyed car. The, 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 just the entire chassis is completely... Com completely shot to hell and the rear well the rear wheels gone the most bits fell off the front's 
completely buckled. I don't know actually what caught fire. Something in the engine caught fire briefly. Uh, we can fire the cannon, but it is to no avail. It's uh, it made it, The cannonball made it a fair way, but uh, that's not going to... No, the wheels aren't even trying... To, uh, maybe a little bit on that side, but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, is it actually, I think it must be, yeah, it is, I think, still uh, still a front-wheel drive car. Um, the front wheel is, is vaguely trying to spin, but it's uh, up in the air. It's not going to do you any good in terms of uh, in terms of driving at that angle. That is a mangled car. Yeah, funnily enough, the... the, the <laughs> uh, the, the cannon, uh, not, not, not an ideal scenario for dealing with jumps, but... But, most importantly, en entertaining, amusing. And that's what we go for here at Foul Race. That's a very dead car. On to our results table, and it is a fantastic showing from the Moonhawk. It'll take a fifth spot, beats the little Miramar section, the front-wheel drive Sunburst, the Pursue, and so on. Can't quite beat the Grand Marshal or the Caldera. Admittedly, both of those also killed on the same jump, although both of them with steering failure managed to roll further down the road than the Moonhawk. The Grand Marshal was off into the trees. The Caldera actually managed to make... Uh, a little bit of distance, despite having no control over the steering, amusingly. But, uh, yeah, the Moonhawk was a, a very, very good showing. A very, very tough car, indeed, around here until that drive shaft eventually gave way, especially considering we lost a wheel so early on that kept going and kept having the speed it was powerful enough to keep making those jumps. We do have to go a fair bit further down, though, to find the other vehicles. The 200 Knights is in 40th place. It becomes our highest-ranked car on the opening lap, but, yeah, it couldn't make it onto its second lap with that. Uh, steering failure. So the wheels started buckling and they got worse and worse and more and more undrivable until they were so bent out of shape that uh, the car didn't really work anymore. And, well, the Cobbett Turtle is at the bottom. Yeah, that horrendously twisted chassis. Uh, essentially all the force is going through that with such a huge amount of weight on the side with the cannon that uh, that would yeah, just break break everyone. Once the rear axle was sort of all snapped up and uh, just the general the general energy going through that car from that crash would uh, see the turtle very very much out entertaining entertaining nevertheless that though is going to be it for this video as ever i shall link all the mods used in the description so you can download them have a go or with them yourself thank you very much for watching and until next time uh goodbye